I've been diagnosed with schizophrenia for over 10 years, and if you had told me that llamas were gonna be a potential cure, I don't know how I would have reacted. Uh, and I still don't know how to react, so <laughs> let me tell you guys a little bit about what I'm talking about. I recently saw on the news that there are treatments from llama brains that could potentially help people with schizophrenia, and I assumed this was a post from The Onion or some sort of like satirical funny post. This is a real thing. I, I looked it up and there are different articles in Newsweek and the New York Post and all sorts of stuff. So, and I wanna talk a little bit about this because I think it's interesting but I want to break down what this actually means, what type of symptoms they think they're going to cure with llama-derived antibodies. But let's go ahead and get into it. So let me be clear, uh, llamas themselves cannot cure schizophrenia, but there is a study that's showing that llama-derived antibodies show promise as a potential new treatment. And just to be clear, as of right now, there is no cure for schizophrenia, and I don't think that what they're saying here is that this would be a cure. It looks like it might be another form of treatment that allows people to live more full functional lives, but I'm going to get into this article now. I want to tell you guys all about it. So according to these news articles, French researchers say they have developed a molecule from llamas that could one day help patients with schizophrenia. So the research is on small antibody fragments found in llamas called nanobodies. The potential hope for this is apparently to treat cognitive symptoms. Now I've talked about this in the past. Medication for schizophrenia usually centers around the positive symptoms, not the cognitive or negative. So the positive symptoms of schizophrenia are hallucinations, delusions, paranoid thoughts. That's what our current antipsychotic medication is made for, is to help reduce or even eliminate those symptoms in patients, which is great. I'm, I'm very grateful to have that type of medication, but there's not a lot out there for cognitive or negative symptoms that people with schizophrenia still experience. And I've talked about that a lot on this channel. Those are symptoms like memory issues or cognitive delay, issues with speech, stuff like that. It's all things that are taken away from a person's abilities or from what they're able to do. Apparently a study published explored the use of the nanobodies to target specific brain receptors involved in regulating neural activity. So apparently these antibodies have the potential to help address cognitive deficits. And this is something that current schizophrenia medication doesn't really do. I'm very open about this, even though it is embarrassing to admit, I do have cognitive issues because of my diagnosis. When you live with schizophrenia or psychosis and you go long enough untreated, it starts to have a lot of effects on your cognitive abilities. And so over time, it can get worse and worse. And even if you get medication and treatment, it can still affect your cognitive abilities. So this is actually incredible because if it works out, it'll be one of the first of its kind to be able to help people with the aftermath of getting diagnosed with a severe mental illness like schizophrenia. So apparently this study has showed positive results in preclinical models. So that would be like using mice models of, of schizophrenia. And apparently a single injection was showing improved cognitive function that lasted for up to a week in these test subjects. Now, obviously there is still a lot going on here. Uh, it still needs to go through human trials and the research is still in its early stages. I just thought this was really interesting because it seemed like it couldn't be true. When I first saw it on my timeline, I ignored it because I thought it was a joke. And then many of you, like all of my followers on all of the platforms I'm on, started sending me all of the different news articles and I, I started looking at it and there's a lot to unpack here and I'm not a scientist, so I can't explain it super well, but this is really interesting and I'm always hoping that we'll gain some more insight into not only what causes schizophrenia to develop, but how to treat it more effectively. And that means treating the cognitive and negative symptoms as well. Uh, there's a quote from one of the study's authors and it says, there is an urgent need for efficient and innovative therapies to treat brain disorders such as psychiatric and neurodegenerative diseases. Immunotherapies have been proven to be effective in many medical areas, but have not been considered to treat brain diseases due to poor brain penetration of immunoglobulins. Once again, I am not a scientist. I'm just telling you guys what I'm reading. Here. Uh, it says that that word uh, are antibodies that are critical to the body's immune response. So it sounds like there's still a lot they need to learn about this, but schizophrenia affects around 1% of Americans. 
uh, and it can cause a lot of different issues. Like I said, a lot of different symptoms. And so they're creating this in hopes to treat just one of the symptom domains that people with my diagnosis struggle with. I just thought this was really interesting. I had to share it with you guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Let me know what I didn't get right, what I don't understand. Cause once again, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. I'm just a person living with schizophrenia. But what do you guys think about this? Cause I, I do think it's, it's really interesting and I am very hopeful that we can really combat some of this cognitive deficit and cognitive issues that come with this diagnosis. It's something that still frustrates me to this day that I deal with almost every day. I, I still really struggle with cognitive issues, memory issues, stuff like that because of my diagnosis. And so I'm very hopeful that something like this could potentially be developed in my lifetime. As always, be sure to like and subscribe. Also check out the Skits and Giggles podcast I do with Kit Wallace, a person living with schizoaffective disorder, and check out my book, Minds Over Meetings, about mental health and mental illness in the workplace, and you can find it anywhere you buy books. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, don't worry, I'm real.